In this video we're going to be taking a look at zeros in the product and you will need to turn your GoMath book to turn in your GoMath book to page 191 and the essential question is how do you know you have the correct number of decimal places in your product? And let's take a look at that problem on page 191 and let's take a look at the connect part. It says when decimals are multiplied the product may not have enough digits to place the decimal point. In these cases you may need to write additional zeros. Now we're going to take a look at this problem. It says students are racing typical garden snails and measuring the distance the snail travels the snail travel in one minute. Chris's snail travels a distance of two tenths of a foot Jamie's snail travels a whopping four-tenths times as far as Chris's snail. How far does Jamie's snail travel? So what we are going to do, we're going to multiply four-tenths times two-tenths. And we see that using the given information, describe what you are being asked to find there on the upper right-hand corner. And we can see that we need to find four-tenths of two tenths foot to determine the distance Jamie's snail travels. Okay, so what we can do for step one, we can multiply as whole numbers. Okay, in other words, whenever we do that, we are eliminating the decimal points for each number, and we're just simply multiplying four and two, as you can see right over here on the right, giving us eight. Now, step two, we want to determine the position of the decimal point in the product. Since tenths are being multiplied by tenths, the product will need to show the hundredths place. Let's write that down. So the hundredths place value. Okay, now think about, remember, we have two digits to the right of the decimal in our problem. That means we need, we need to have two digits to the right of the decimal in our answer, which will take us to the hundredths place. Now, step three, we need to place the decimal point. Are there enough digits in the product to place the decimal point? Okay, in other words, we have the answer of eight. We have our decimal point here, and we move over one to the left, okay? Now we still need to move over another one to the hunt to make it in a hundredths place. So there are enough digits? The answer is no. In other words, there's only one digit to go around and we actually need to go around two digits. So what we need to do, we need to write zeros as needed, as needed to the left of the whole number product to place the decimal point. Okay, so we have one digit to the left one place value to the left, I should say, that's not going to cut it. So what we need to do is add another zero. Okay, now we can go two digits to the left, or two place values, I should say, to the left of that eight, giving us a number that falls in the hundredths place. Okay, so we could see, so Snamey, Jamie's snail, there we go, travels a, diff, a distance of zero and eight hundredths of a foot, or we could just say eight hundredths of a foot. Why did we move that place, that decimal two place values to the left? Is because we had two total digits to the right of the decimal in our problem, therefore we needed two total digits to the right of the decimal for our product. Okay, let's take a look at that example problem on page 192. And it says multiply money. We want to multiply 2 tenths times 30 cents. And the first thing we need to do is we need to multiply whole numbers. Now, what we need to think about, the factors are 30 hundredths and 2 tenths. Okay, so in other words, what we can do, multiply the two whole numbers, we can do 30 times 2. That's going to give us 60. Okay. So from here, what are the whole numbers we will multiply? Okay, already kind of answered that one. 30 times 2 are the whole numbers. Now step 2, determine the position of the decimal point in the product. Since hundredths are being multiplied by tenths, the product will show. In other words, we have two digits to the right of the decimal in my problem. For my factor on top, one digit to the right of the decimal and my other with my other factors for a total of three digits to the right of the decimal. So 
think about three place values to the right of the decimal, that's going to actually be thousandths. So let's write that down. So thousandths place. Now the third and final step, we want to place the decimal point. So we have the digit of 60, the number of 60, write zeros to the left of the whole number product as needed. Since the problem involves dollars and cents, what place value should you use to show cents? Okay, for this one we will show hundredths. Okay, so we have 60 here. Now something that we do need to consider, if we were to go back to our original problem, 30 cents times 2 tenths, we need to remember we have a 2 times 0 is going to give us 0, 2 times 3 will give us 6, and 2 times 0 will give us a 0 here. So we can see if we take that decimal point to the right, move it 3 places to the left, 1, 2, 3, okay, we have 0 0 0.06 or in other words we have 6 cents. Okay, let's take a look at that next problem. We have 5 hundredths times 2 tenths. Okay, we multiply 2 times 5, it's going to give me 10, put my 0 there carry my 1, 2 times 0 is 1, and 2 times 0 is 0. Okay, now we do have two, pl two places to the right of the decimal in my top product, one place, I'm sorry, my top factor, one place to the right of the decimal for my other factor, which gives me a total of three places to the right of the decimal. And now what we can do, we can put that decimal point there, so we have one, two, three places to the right of the decimal. Now, if I were just doing this with whole numbers, five times two, that's going to give me 10. Remember, three places to the right of the decimal. So I have one, if I move over one, then two, I've run out of digits, so I need to add a zero right there for a total of three. Still gives me the same answer, but we can see it's a different way of doing it. Now, what steps did we take to find the product? Okay, and I want you to pause the video, copy this down, and you can copy it right underneath where it says, what steps did you take to find the product? This will give you a good explanation on the steps that you need to write down in order to, that we use to solve that problem. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at these problems here and I want you to turn to page 193 in your Go Math book and we have five hundredths times seven tenths so we need to write the zeros in the product so hundredths are multiplied by tenths what should be the place value of the product so we have hundredths and tenths hundredths two places to the right of the decimal tenths one place for a total of three tenths so it's going to be thousandths okay will be the place value okay but we can see right now we have our decimal point to the right, 5, move it 1 over, 2 over, and we actually need to add, we can see, another 0. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, giving us thousandths there. Okay, so we have 35 thousandths for the answer. Now let's take a look at this next problem. Okay, 2 tenths times 3, three tenths, think about what place value should um, the product be in, okay, and we know a tenth times a tenth, okay, the place value is going to be in the hundredths place value, so we have six, that means we need to move that decimal two places to the right. One place, we've run out of numbers, so we need to add a zero for six hundredths. Now let's take a look at this final problem. I want you to complete this problem all by yourself. When you're finished, you can press play. And I will have the answer for you. So pause the video now. 
Now we have the answer of four thousandths. You can also put zero for a whole number for each of these, just showing that there is not a whole number at all. So I want you to work through, through these two problems, and when you're finished, you can press play, and I will have the answers for you. So pause the video now. Okay, you can see my answer now. I have two digits to the right of the decimal within my problem. So that means I need to have two digits to the right of the decimal for my answer. Three and three is nine. I did have to add a zero to the left of nine and put my decimal point to the left of the tenths place. Five and three is 15. However, I needed three, place, three digits to the right of the decimal in my answer. So I moved that decimal point over, putting a zero in front of the tenths place for 15 thousandths. Now I want you to try these two problems out. When you're finished, you can press play, and I will have the answer for you. So pause the video now. Okay, you can see my answers. I have 8 thousandths and 18 thousandths. Now let's take a look at these problems. Work through them all by yourself. When you're finished, you can press play, and I will have the answers for you. So pause the video now. Okay, you can see my two answers, 20 thousandths. And we had two digits to the right of the decimal, one digit for a total of three digits to the right of the decimal. Therefore, I had to move my decimal point over three place values, which, which meant I need to add a zero in front of the two. And we have two digits and one digit to the right of the decimal, totaling three. That means I need to have three digits to the right of the decimal in my answer. So six and eight is 48. Then I had to move my decimal place over three place values, adding a zero in front of that four, giving me 48 thousandths. OK, I want you to work through this test prep problem. When you're finished, you can press play, and I will have the answer for you. So pause the video now. OK, here is the answer letter D. And wrapping up the video, let's take a look at this essential question. How do you know you have the correct number of decimal places in your product? I can count the number of decimal place values in each factor and add to find the correct number of place values the product should have. So this concludes the video on zeros in the product. If you have any questions about this concept, please come and see me.